It's the new year, it's 2024, and what better way than to pop it off with five ladies of wrestling. Welcome to Wrestling Through the Ages. Well, let's start off this list with the worst one of the bunch. Do I really want to talk about Sable? No, not really. But sadly, we have to. She held back legit female talent that could actually work. Sable hit the Playboy cover three times and sadly won the Women's Championship once back in 1999 in an evening gown match. Yeah. Yes, women's wrestling during the late 90s were really something. Bras and panties match, mud wrestling, swimsuit and bikini competitions. It got to the point where you may as well just paint it on. Oh yeah. Anyway, during the late 90s, women's wrestling stunk up all the arenas across America. Sable was front and for Mildred Burke. What is there to say that I haven't already stated previously? Mildred was the first legit pre kayfabe built like a brick shithouse female wrestler who pioneered and led the way for women's professional wrestling back when it was seen as a circus act, a farce, and something that Americans would gather around to have a few laughs at. She carried that belt across the world, unified it in Japan. She was the first undefeated women's champion. The first girls only wrestling school was created by Mildred, and she had a 97% win rate, which is extremely high. I could go on about this legend, the she phenom, the goat Burke, but just check out my previous video on her career. Sherry Martel. I don't say this often, but this is one of my favorite top talents. Very early on, Sherry Martel had a huge stroke of luck by being sent to Japan, specifically the WWWA, and had several matches against the top of the top. I'm talking about people like Jaguar Yokota, Lioness Asuka, Nancy Kumi, Devil Misami, just to name a few. And her skills improved tenfold because now Sherry knows how to take bumps like no other. Being paired up eventually with the likes of Macho Man, Shawn Michaels, Harlem Heat, and Ric Flair, you just cannot talk about women's wrestling without mentioning Sherry. How talented she was and how smart she was to get out of boring ass women's wrestling back when it was really boring. Because North American women's wrestling took a hell of a nosedive from the mid 80s to about 2000. Has it gone better now? Yeah. And I think Sherry's a factor. Anyway, here are some of Sherry's bumps. Lioness Asuka. Finally, some Joshi Puro Resu. You know, good women wrestling. The type that we never really got up here. She was one of the first super talented Joshis, winning the AJW Junior Belt in 1981 and the AJW Championship in 82. She formed the Joshi tag team Crush Gals, which did you know they released a music single that sold 100,000 copies? When in the USA, she continued her ongoing feud with Medusa Maselli. Anyway, with partner Shiguza Nagayo, they would put on clinics against Jaguar Yokota and Devil Masami. And I do mean that at the hundredth of percent. I'll be doing a video on the Crush Gals eventually, but y'all need to know these four chicks created a vast majority of the moves the men use today, and even polished a lot of moves that look pretty sloppy or weak looking. Charlotte Flair. Now there isn't too much to say about Charlotte seeing she just got her lucky break a good 10 years ago. Is she good? Well not at first when she debuted on NXT, but that changed rather quite quickly. She rised up the ranks and outperformed wrestlers that have been there much longer than her, got good on the mic, coined several moves and spots. It's also undeniable that the Flair name helped her tenfold. Right now, as it stands, she's the most famous female talent, not only on the WWE roster but in North America, period which is why she deserves to be on this top 5 list. I'll be doing more of these top 5s as the months go on. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Wrestling Through the Ages.